Being creative. Often when people are talking about creativity, they are actually talking about imagination. Though imagination is a crucial part of being creative, it also involves that you actually create something. Hi, I'm Vincent. In today's video, I want to talk about the aspects that support creative freedom and what we do to achieve that freedom as optimally as possible. Ever since the day I started my own design firm, I've been optimizing our design procedures. What it always seems to need is more time. Shield, we are clear. Almost. Just a second. I really need this done, Sylvian. Just a second. What are we waiting for? That second. <laughs> Not that we ever felt that we were unable to come up with original and surprising ideas, but the procedure to actually make those ideas presentable to clients takes time, a lot of time. And because during that stage of the design process, concepts are more or less frozen, we can't spend any more time on improvements. And actually, honestly, that always feels kind of wasteful. However, not spending the time to make our presentations and with that, freezing the designs is an even bigger waste. I mean, we will never be able to finish anything. So creativity involves actually creating stuff and being able to show what your thoughts were. Now this leads to an inevitable need for tools that enable you to create. Be it a hammer, a typewriter, a pencil or a computer, it doesn't really matter. Knowing which tool to use adds to the efficiency of the creator. Depending on what you are creating, you need a tool to do so, obviously. So, once you know what you want to create, and you've figured out what tool you're going to use, you're halfway there. The next step is training your skill with the tool. This is an absolutely crucial part in achieving the creations you imagined. And that is exactly the reason why you might hire a professional specialist to solve your problem because they don't see it as a problem. They see it as their work. They do it every single day. To them, it has become routine. They have spent hours upon hours to master every trick of their trade. So you wanna be creative? Just do it. Literally, do it. Do it often, like a toddler who tries to walk. It will get better, but only with a lot of practice. Most of the work in my studio involves a lot of drawing tinkering with ideas and sketching them out in order to not forget them and to actually be able to communicate them with each other and our clients. I hate to limit inspiration. It has to flow freely, constantly, always. Any distraction could lead to a full stop, running out of paper to sketch on, an empty battery in my camera or waiting on a computer to finish rendering. The space where we create our designs needs to be efficient and support collaboration as much as possible. And the tools we use, well, they have to work flawlessly and quickly. Our monitors need to be color calibrated. The PCs need to be extremely powerful so they don't hold us back. Batteries need to be charged and ready for action. And pencils have to be sharp at all times. Any excuse to not create something every day has to be eliminated immediately. The studio we work out of is great. It's at an awesome location right by the beach and there's enough space to make a huge mess. <laughs> and that mess is exactly the thing that's getting on my nerves. The tools we use need to have a home, a place where they go when we don't use them. And right now, my stuff is scattered all over the place. For the record, we didn't plan it to be like this. It just accumulated over the years. Temporary solutions became permanent ones, and those got their own temporary solutions that were never addressed after that. Why fix it when well, it ain't broken, right? Recently, I relocated my workshop to a garage next to my house. So the room in the studio where it previously was is now available. This space is great for storing camera gear, a ridiculously large printer, and our miniature render farm. And lots and lots of smaller bits and pieces 
that are homeless right now. So let's unravel this space. There's one window, there's a door, and a small built-in cabinet. There's a wooden floor that has seen better days, and some boring, very boring, white walls. What I want it to be is a room with space for a ton of small parts, some of which are very delicate, some are really robust. Everything needs to be organized in such a way that they don't clutter my view, but are easily accessible at the same time. I also want to record these videos in there. So it could do with some sound treatment, because this room is very hollow and echoey. Listen. Ugh. And the boring white walls, they're gonna get some color. I already made up my mind with regards to the color. When I'm recording video, I would love to have a backdrop that's complementary to my skin tone, because complementary colors are pleasing to look at. There we go. It's a bluish kind of turquoise my favorite color, and it also happens to be the opposite color of my logo. So let's add some branding to the wall. Yes, that's it. And like I said, let's do this. So, stage one of the studio renovation is complete. Stay tuned, or rather subscribe, if you want to see more videos about creativity and design, and what it can do for your company. See you next time.